Hello, my name is Carlos Mena. I'm an interventional cardiologist, uh, associate professor of medicine cardiology at Yale University, Yale New Haven Hospital, where I also uh, work as the director of vascular medicine, as well as the director of the cardiac catheterization laboratory. I'm here today to talk about uh, silver PTX, drug gluten stain, and its applications in peripheral vascular disease. Before I start, I want to say thank you to Dr. Craig Walker for inviting me to participate uh, in this NCDH uh, education, digital education series. As you know, uh, with COVID-19, the landscape of um, uh, medical education has changed, and uh, we all appreciate all the efforts that organizations like NCDH have made to be able to provide this educational content. So without further ado, uh, I will start with my conflict of interest. Uh, I am a consultant for Cook, Medtronic, Cardinal Health, and Optum Labs. And um, as you know, uh, the paclitaxel debate that has uh, gone on for several months, years now, has uh, shed or put some light specifically around this device. And it's important that we go through it in detail to try to demystify some of the concepts that exist, particularly uh, around the use of this uh, specific extent. So there are uh, many devices uh, that have gone and approved uh, that contain paclitaxel, silver PTX being one of them. But when you think about uh, a scaffold stent in silver, it was really the first one that paved the way, uh, not only in the US, but overseas, uh, for all the regulatory agents uh, to be able uh, to get them approved in each of the, the geographies. When we're talking about uh, this issue of mortality, it's important to know one specific concept, which is the actual treatment. In other words, most of the trials and studies that have been done with all these different devices have been basically randomized controlled trials, but all of them have different pathways and different organizations and being able to understand them is of paramount importance because when you're talking about mortality specifically, you need to be able to understand who actually got the device and who actually didn't. Last but not least is the patient impact. Obviously these devices have a significant uh, impact in the patient's efficacy, meaning the re rate has dropped dramatically compared to the era of bare metal stents or plain balloon angioplasty. So to say that these devices are not safe, then we have to be 100% certain of that or get as close as possible because otherwise you're depriving patients in need of this specific technology. Now, in terms of uh, the last point, which is patient benefit, certainly Silver PTX um, has given us results uh, a long term, out to five years. And as you will see in my next few slides, there has been a significant reduction in reastenosis rate as well, which obviously will result in lower uh, re-interventions. And certainly all this data for randomized clinical trials have been presented uh, or have been extrapolated to real world patients as many of the different registries have uh, shown. When we're talking about the specific device, uh, we got to remember a few things. So the coding uh, is basically packed a low dose amorphous coding with no polymer or excipient. And it's particularly important because it will distinguish it from other devices in which uh, these are present. In terms of the concentration of the active paclitaxel, you can see in this slide how the dose is very different from all these different devices. In, uh, in silver, basically, we know that the range is anywhere between 0.3 to 3.5 milligrams compared to the other medications that you can see depending upon the length of the device uh, that you're being, that are you utilizing. Uh, it's a short-term drug delivery. There's no long-term paclitaxel uh, uh, exposure. And after this is being delivered, basically what you have is a metallic scaffold that will uh, prevent all the mechanical complications like recoil and dissections that come for their compromise patency. And as I described before, there's long-term data with this device, unlike other uh, scaffold devices with this medication. Um, they have a large clinical program. And I think that this is another key feature 
of this program. They have a randomized controlled clinical trial in which silver PTX was compared against plain balloon angioplasty and bare metal stents. They have a similar study in Japan. They have European data. They have single arm studies. Uh, they have uh, Chinese studies and there are different registries. All along to uh, show you that there have been more than a thousand patients uh, that supported the approval of this specific device here in the United States with more than 2,500 patients globally in pre and or post marketing studies with more than over 300,000 uh, devices implanted globally. So the randomized controlled clinical trial done uh, originally that led to the FDA approval of the device as well as the Japan one that led to their approval in that geography are large studies with long-term follow-up uh, with a concurrent competitor groups. And we're gonna explain what that means uh, shortly. Uh, in the Japanese uh, study specifically, it's important to know that there was no exclusion criteria, making as real as it gets in terms of the type of patients that got into the registry. And it was basically a pure tra treatment comparison. Uh, in the randomized controlled trial, just to go back for a second, the trial was designed with a by a multidisciplinary group of physicians, uh, which ultimately led to the approval by the FDA, the PMDA, and other regulatory agencies around the world. Now, this perhaps is the most important slide about this trial design. And I'm gonna go through the, the, the trial design and the randomization because basically it's gonna highlight the importance of understanding patient treatment, specifically as it relates to the mortality issue. In the randomized control trial, so patients could be randomized either to silver PTX or plain balloon angioplasty. And you can see the end there. Now, those that had plain balloon angioplasty subsequently would have either a great result or a suboptimal angioplasty, meaning there was a flow limit in dissection or a significant gradient, whatever you want to say. And those that had suboptimal angioplasty then were randomized into either a bare metal stent or a silver PTX. So you can see now how there were different group of people that despite of being in different arms would get the silver PTX. Those that had an optimal angioplasty the protocol allowed for intervention in the first year uh, if the patient had restenosis and they would be able to get silver PTX, giving me a third group of patients that despite of being randomized to plain balloon angioplasty would also get silver PTX. So if you look at the design, there are three boxes in red that highlight which patients actually got PTX. So it's not just to look at the randomization, specifically when you're looking at the issue of mortality, but also looking uh, who actually got this specific device. So if you look at it in a different way, you have a primary randomization in which a group of people get PTX and other ones get either bare metal stent or angioplasty. But out of the angioplasty, there is another randomization in which a group of people get PTX and other get bare metal stents. And those that got a great result in the angioplasty would still benefit from silver PTX due to instant restenosis. So when you look at all this, you see how the red, which is the PTX group continues to increase as the trial goes on. So basically what I'm trying to say is 40% of the patients initially randomized to plain balloon angioplasty were actually treated with silver PTX. So when you're looking at the issue of mortality, you need to actually concentrate on the issue of actual treatment, which basically will include, include primary um, uh, randomization, secondary randomization, and crossover for those patients that receive plain angioplasty that ultimately develop instant restenosis and will benefit from it. So what are the results? If you look at it uh, on intention to treat, which is basically how we look at in terms of efficacy, you would basically compare the primary randomization of the two groups. And based upon that, then you would say uh, what has been published in many of the different studies looking at the issue of safety. The problem is when you are looking at safety, it's different. You're not looking at an intention to treat, but you're actually looking at what the patients actually got. And this is the crux of the issue as it relates to many of the analyses that have been done that showed an increased mortality of this specific device. 
So when you're looking at the issue of mortality, you got to include the primary randomization, the secondary, and the crossover against the plain balloon angioplasty or the bare metal stem, which is what is highlighted there. Remember, 40% of the patients that were randomized into the plain balloon angioplasty did get silver PTX. So an, any analysis based in intention to treat is inappropriate as it relates to uh, the issue of safety. It only helps in terms of efficacy, but when it's safety, you got to look basically uh, in terms of what the patients actually got. Again, highlighting here the issue of early crossover as well as secondary randomization. The, what I want to highlight in this slide is the issue that when the, the analysis by Dr. Kansanis uh, et al. was initially done, and you look at the actual patients included in one versus the other group, it seems like 18% of the patients that were part of the crossover group were left out. So in reality, many of the issues that related to mortality uh, from the paclitaxel specifically were uh, uh, inappropriately adjudicated because the patients uh, actually uh, did or did not get the medication. So again, the issue here is when it comes about safety, you got to look at a who got the device and who didn't get the device, okay? Now, <clears throat> if you look at the uh, issue of mortality and look at the meta-analysis by Dr. Kansanis in which a significant amount of patients were left out that actually got uh, paclitaxel and he showed a statistically significant difference favoring mortality and we do the appropriate analysis, including those patients, meaning doing it and based upon uh, the treatment that the patients actually get it, you see that the analysis and the outcome is completely different from one that is statistically significant to another one that it isn't. Now, the actual treatment, as you can see, makes a big difference. And when it comes to safety, is the way to go. FDA has treated analysis and cook analysis, including actual treatment. And when they do that, the trend towards increased mortality disappears. This is the FDA analysis of the actual treatment. And you can see here the comparison in red of silver PTX and plain balloon angioplasty. All patients analyzed actually got treatment versus not, and there was no signal in terms of mortality. So very different safety versus efficacy type of analysis. Similar analysis were replicated by Cook, and we can see here a comparison between the same groups, angioplasty and bare metal stents versus silver PTX. And you can see here how there's no statistically significant difference between the two groups. Um, you can uh, do further analysis. In this specific case, an analysis was done between plain bare metal stent and silver PTX head to head. And you can see that there is no mortality signal either. If that was the case, meaning that the US pivotal trials did not show any significant trend in mortality, you would hope that the same outcomes will be replicated in other geographies. Here I'm showing you the same study done in Japan in which bare metal stents are compared against drug eluting stents. And you can see that there's no significant difference. Remember, earlier in my presentation, I described how the Japanese study was a large real world post-market study in which there was no exclusion criteria and uh, there was no uh, mortality signal either. So when you do covariate analysis, there was no mortality signal for silver PTX when evaluated by actual treatment and uh, were there any factors associated with mortality? That will be the question that one come up. So if you start looking at the covariate analysis, you can see that there is nothing statistically significant uh, in this specific group of people. But more important, look at the silver PTX it is not a statistically significant in the covariate, covariate analysis, which again highlights the issue of safety. Uh, you can see here and you can see the p-values there. So comorbidities that are common in patients uh, were significant predictors of mortality, including tissue loss, uh, heart failure, and uh, age particularly, but silver PTX was not one of them. So important to remember that, okay? Now, uh, in terms of those, the same thing, there was some suspicion that the mortality was linked to the amount of concentration that was given. And you can see that both in the randomized control trial as well as the Japanese trial uh, was not 
uh, uh, influence of the dose or linkage between the dose and the final outcome. So paclitaxel dose is not a predictor of mortality. So in conclusion, so you and all the audience have to realize that this issue of safety and efficacy is a very important. And the key distinction is well as in efficacy, intention to treat analysis is appropriate. In the issue of safety, uh, actual treatment makes a big difference. When you perform those analysis based upon what the patients get, there are a fear, there, the issue of mortality disappears. And it highlights the importance of understanding the complex randomized clinical trials and their design. I think we as physicians have to be able to understand what is being given to us so that we can make uh, intelligent decisions. So analysis uh, must be based on actual treatment. Protocol defined secondary randomization and crossover cannot be ignored. No mortality signal, particularly with silver PTX when data is analyzed appropriately. And uh, ultimately it's all about the patient being able to offer them these technologies uh, in an effort to uh, improve their chances or keeping their legs and uh, avoid their interventions is of paramount importance. With that, I finish and thank you very much for your attention.